Americans keep horses to ride and race, and we appreciate their noble nature. But in other parts of the world, they're treated as livestock, the same as cattle or poultry. As Bill Whitaker reports, that leaves one businessman in the middle of an angry culture war. Just a heads up, this story may be disturbing. They are the very heartbeat of the Old West, wild horses that roam America's prairies. While some see majesty in their freedom, others see profit, not in what horses bring to wranglers and ranchers, but to slaughterhouses for their meat. For more than two decades, this has been the Roswell plant where Rick De Los Santos slaughtered cattle. Now he plans to do what to some is unthinkable, butcher horses instead. The tough economy took its toll on De Los Santos. He and his wife, Sarah, run this family business together. They've lost more than $200,000 over the past two years. But they saw a new opportunity. Upon the recommendation of its accountability office, Congress reversed a five-year-old ban on American horse slaughter, agreeing it had made conditions worse for the animals. Many of them trucked over the border to Mexico for slaughter under horrible conditions, documented by the Humane Society. So these horses are going into Mexico to be slaughtered there, and all we want is to take care of them here. De Los Santos applied for a license and began to retrofit his plant to meet the new USDA requirements. He was delighted to learn his would be the first American slaughterhouse cleared to sell horse meat to Mexico, Belgium, and a host of other countries where it is considered a delicacy. Now relief has turned to frustration. It, it's cost us about $75,000 is what it's cost us just to get ready to slaughter horses. And it's now just sitting idle? It's sitting idle, yes, sir. Believing he's fulfilled the USDA requirements, he's been anxious to get his final government inspection and license. But it's been nearly four expensive months of waiting for the USDA to pay a visit. It's, it's very frustrating, very frustrating when we submit paperwork to USDA and get it back and we get, it's incomplete. De Los Santos thinks the delay is deliberate since he's become a focal point in the anti-horse slaughter movement. A bill has been introduced on Capitol Hill to ban horse slaughter for good. And even the governor of New Mexico released a statement about his business, saying that creating a horse slaughterhouse in New Mexico is wrong. More than 100,000 of these animals already are rounded up every year, slaughtered across the border and the meat shipped to Europe and Asia. It's a thriving international business, but still barely making a dent in the U.S. horse overpopulation problem. Domesticated horses are abandoned, and wild horses simply left to breed unchecked. Still, animal rights advocates insist more regulated and supervised horse slaughter here in the U.S. is not the answer. Horse slaughter can never be done humanely, uh, partially because of the nature of horses. Um, when you have an animal that's what is called fractious, where they want to run, they want to be safe, you can't humanely slaughter them. Advocates say there are other ways to manage horse overpopulation, including finding more funding for places like this. The horse shelter is a nonprofit that takes in, treats, and occasionally euthanizes abandoned animals. The shelter's Jennifer Rios says Americans have an emotional bond with horses, making it impossible to think of them simply as livestock. They represent freedom. You see a horse running, and there's nothing more freeing looking than a horse. But to the De Los Santos's, horses represent economic freedom, and they point out there are too many unwanted horses to be sheltered. Besides, they just want to put their employees back to work. Why continue to outsource? I mean, this whole election is going to be about jobs. The USDA says it's not preventing the De Los Santos's from providing jobs. The agency just needs more time to train inspectors. Now the couple is also being threatened with fines for alleged improper composting, and both fear the threat they face from activists who have targeted them. They yell and scream and pick it and do everything else. And, and for a small voice out here in Roswell, New Mexico, how loud can we scream? You know, those organizations there are very powerful, very wealthy, and, you know, how long can we go on? So I ask you that, how long can you keep going? Uh, I have a lot of faith, a lot of faith, and I believe things will work out. I really do. Rick De Los Santos knows it'll be easy selling horse meat to foreign markets, but it will be much more difficult to sell the American public on a simple idea, 
Horses can be your friends, but they can also be your food. For CBS This Morning, Bill Whitaker, Roswell, New Mexico. Nope, you know the line that got me in that piece, guys, where she said, horse slaughter cannot be done humanely. That's what got me. I can't, and I know it's a contradiction from a girl who enjoys a good burger, but there's something about when you see a, a something that can be your food and that can be your friend. I can't, I, I can't wrap my brain around it. I it's can't. hard to see. It really is something that I think in this country most people are, are very uncomfortable with. Yeah. And part of that is, is what they represent, as we saw some people saying they represent this freedom. They're such a majestic animal. It's one of those stories in which you say, there has to be a better way. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Tony had an idea, eat broccoli. I love you, broccoli. You can, al can always count on Tony. He's Plus always got an of, idea. Lots of calcium for That's Tony. True. Thank you. In 1986. Well, um, the last time Tony had broccoli. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Tony. Ouch. <laughs>